To understand how significantly Israel has changed the face of Jerusalem since the occupation began in 1967, it's important to know what the area looked like prior to the occupation. This map shows the governorate of Jerusalem. A governorate is like a district, and it is outlined on this map in black. The green line you see is the 1949 Armistice Line, which separates the territory recognized as Israel from the West Bank. The areas in gold represent territory densely populated by Palestinians. The Armistice Line of 1949 ran through the municipality of Jerusalem. The area shaded with brown lines was the part under Israeli control prior to 1967. This was West Jerusalem. The area in green, East Jerusalem, was a mere 6.5 square kilometers. After Israel occupied the West Bank, they unilaterally declared a new municipal boundary for Jerusalem, which increased the part of the municipality beyond the Green Line from 6.5 square kilometers to 71 square kilometers. They annexed the entire new municipality, which includes many densely populated Palestinian areas, declaring this part of the Israeli capital. The international community and the United States still do not recognize this step and consider all territories beyond the Green Line to be occupied and consider that occupation to be illegal under international law. Soon, Israeli colonies, or settlements as you may have heard them called, began to be built on occupied Palestinian land. From 1967 to 1970, the large colonies like Atarot or Ramat Eshkol began to separate the Palestinian Arab population from the heart of Jerusalem. An aggressive step forward for Israel's colonial enterprise came in the 1970s when large settlements like Ma'ale Adumim, Ramot Alon, and Gilo were built. It became clear at this point that a policy was in place to reorient the geopolitical reality in Jerusalem by encircling the eastern part with Israeli settlements. This continued to become more clear over time. Settlements like Pisgat Ze'ev and Ramot Shlomo were embedded in the 1980s, putting significant Israeli populations in the heart of the only city that could serve as a capital in a Palestinian state. The construction of these settlements even came during the 1990s when a peace process began with the goal of creating a Palestinian state. Settlements like Har Homa, which didn't exist before 1990, now stood between Bethlehem and Jerusalem, separating two cities which have been connected for millennia. In brown, you can see areas slated for expansion in recent years, and the red outline you see is a segregation wall that separates Jewish communities from Palestinian ones. This wall impedes movement of Palestinians and prevents many from getting to Jerusalem. In orange, you can see areas where Israel has given final approval to settlement expansion projects in the last two years despite repeated calls by the international community to halt settlement expansion. The wall and the settlements are not the only thing keeping Palestinian Arabs out of Jerusalem. Checkpoints which surround the city, manned by Israeli soldiers, dictate who gets in and who doesn't. While Palestinians outside of the Jerusalem municipality cannot get in, Palestinians on the inside are facing increased pressures to leave. Through home evictions and house demolition, the State of Israel forces many Palestinians in Jerusalem to relocate to other places often outside of the city. The yellow arrows you see indicate areas that have been targeted by home demolition only in the past two years. Residency revocations have also led to a decreased Palestinian presence in the city. In 2008 alone, Israel revoked the residencies of over 4,500 Palestinians in Jerusalem. This was a record high. All of these policies over time amount to one simple reality. Israel is actively and aggressively pursuing the Judaization of Jerusalem 
a city that must be shared by Israelis and Palestinians of all faiths in any just peace agreement.